Hey, it's me, Chloe T, and this is Laura Kampf. Laura is a maker and YouTuber who's also a huge inspiration to me. I've been watching her videos for years, and recently I was watching one where she's in a public park, she sees a broken bench, and decides to take it back to her shop to fix it up. At the end of the video, she puts the bench back and encourages people to go check it Please out. Please go ahead and visit my bench. I would love to see people use this bench. Unfortunately, her city is in Germany and I'm in the United States, so going to visit the bench is a little out of the question, but that video still really stuck with me and the idea of just fixing things that you see so other people can enjoy them. So recently I was at a coffee shop. I noticed a broken bench in their back area and I thought I could fix it up. So I asked the girl if I could take the bench. I promised I'd give it back. Surprisingly, she let me. I loaded that bench up into my car and fixed it up. I think what I made is really cool. I love how it turned out, so I want to show you that build. Like Laura, I wanted to use as much recycled material as possible. The sides of the old bench were in really good condition, so I knew I'd use those. And I'd also been wanting to use old tires in a project for a while now, so I headed to the local ditch and rescued a few old tires. I took those back to my place and I got everything cleaned up and taken apart. With everything squeaky clean, I started to cut the tires. The plan was to do something kind of like this, but I had no idea that tires have a bunch of metal wire in them and the rubber's super thick, so just cutting the sidewall off the tires ended up taking a really long time. So I was a bit sick of working on the tires after I got those sidewalls removed, so I turned my attention to the wood crossbars for a little bit. I used some of the wood that I had from my bike barn project. It didn't quite fit into the sides of the bench that I had, so I learned a technique to cut half laps with a circular saw. I really enjoyed doing that, so I decided I would also do cross laps. I figured the cross laps would give the tires a secure place to attach to and also make the bench just look a bit more finished and professional. Cutting cross laps with a circular saw is relatively easy, but it does take a bit of time. You have to set the correct blade depth and then do a lot of cuts across the board. All those cuts can get a bit tedious, but it is very satisfying when you're done and you get to hammer the wood and see what you're left with. The wood comes out surprisingly nicely and I was really pleased with the cross laps that I had. So then with those cross pieces getting close to finish, I begrudgingly went back to working with the tires. I still had these long strips that I needed to cut down to the correct size to be the seat backs. So I tried cutting them with my circular saw and my miter saw, but that took a really long time and it felt like it wasn't good for my tools. I could just feel that the motor was being kind of pushed past probably where it wanted to go. So luckily my neighbor had an angle grinder and with the angle grinder and the correct cutting blade, um, it made the job really easy to get through them, but I will say it is freaking messy. There was rubber all over my tools, my workspace, and even myself. My roommate said, oh, you have a little rubber on your face. Did not realize it was that bad. With the tires cut, I drilled out some more holes into the sides of the bench and then quickly kind of did a dry fit to make sure that everything was going to line up. I decided to attach the wood cross pieces to the sides of the bench. I would use T-nuts, so I got those installed. I cleaned up the wood a little bit because all the hammering had broken some pieces of the wood and there was some cracks in the wood, so I used a mixture of sawdust and wood glue to fill that in. After letting the glue dry, I sanded the wood down with a random orbital sander. I also had some boiled linseed oil lying around, so I decided I'd use that to seal the wood. To do the linseed oil, I cleaned the dust off the wood and then just applied a bunch of it using a rag. Um, after letting the oil penetrate the wood for a little bit, I wiped off the excess. I wouldn't. 
Then I had taken the T-nuts out to sand and seal, so I reinstalled those with some super glue. I also added a support piece of wood to the bottom crossbar because I was kind of nervous that if multiple people sat on the bench, it might break. At this point, I basically just had to put everything together. So I screwed the cross pieces back into the sides, um, and this was actually a bit of a challenge because unfortunately the holes weren't lining up quite right, so I had to drill out those holes a bit bigger, which gave me a more slop to work with, and I did eventually get those crossbars installed, and then I just needed to install the tires. So I laid those tires onto the back pieces, and at this point I was getting very excited. The bench was finally coming together, it was a project with a lot of ups and downs, but now all that was left to do was screw in the tires to the wood. So I used some finish washers and machine screws and just drilled that directly into the wood. And with the tires screwed on, the project was done, and here is the finished bench. And that's my take on Laura's concept of gorilla making. I'm really excited with how my bench turned out. I think the materials came together super nicely. I loved being able to use the old tires and a lot of parts from the original bench. More than that though, I'm super excited on the whole idea of gorilla making and I hope maybe I inspired you to fix something for somebody else. If you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers by the end of 2021, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd help me with that goal. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.